this is Del Shanzi. I'm the WPPGA Paramotor World Champion and the U.S. Glider Control National Champion. I'm also the guy you see all over YouTube setting all the world records and doing things nobody else on earth can do. Now, I'm not trying to brag about myself. It's just that in this sport, there is no license. So you can't say, oh, this guy's certified. He knows what he's doing. You very specifically have to look at people's skill level. So the WPBGA World Championships makes it really easy to be able to equally and fairly compare anyone's skill level directly against someone else's skill level. So until someone beats me, I am currently the best in the world. So that experience is going to now explain why you see so many people crash and why exactly that is because the actual reason is a lot more alarming than you would realize. So let's just watch this video for a second. Here, let me just have you watch the video and then I'll explain it. Okay, so why did that crash happen? There's many reasons. Now, a lot of people think, oh, we flew into rotor, that was turbulence. No, it was perfectly smooth. There was no rotor at all. He simply stalled his glider. He spun the glider. You can see that immediately by the huge flare in the trailing edge, me and he's adding a lot of brake, and you see the glider jackknife in the middle, which is a stall or a spin. So he literally stalled his glider out of the sky. Now, why did this newbie stall his glider out of the sky. This is the issue. The problem is gear related. It is because of the gear. Let me just explain for a second what certified height hook in points are and why they're so critical. So certified height hook in points are approximately 16 inches above the seat board from the seat board to where the carabiner hooks in. That's down around your waist. Now if my riser hooks in right here and I bury the brake as far as I can pull it, notice I can only pull about 14 to 16 inches of brakes even if I push my arm straight down. Now uncertified height hook in points is anything other than that point. There is no low, mid, or high like very ignorant people in the sport talk about. There is certified and uncertified. So think about it. Certified height hook in points, bury the brakes, maybe I pulled 14, 16 inches. What happens if you raise that hook in point above your head or up near your head level like so many outdated paramotors? Well, now when you pull brake, you just pulled four feet of brake. Four feet. If you take a super safe beginner class glider and bury four feet of brake, all of those certifications and all of that hard work they did to make that glider stall and spin resistant goes right out the window. So that is exactly why the guy just died on a Blackhawk a bit ago and I made a video out of it explaining this exact point. He did not have certified height hook in points. Just like Fly Products or Fresh Breeze or Nirvana or so many other units that have hook in points from way over 40 years ago, clear back to the beginning of the sport when it first came from skydiving, where they hook in above the shoulders. But over 40 years ago, this problem was well known about because newbies very commonly will accidentally pulse too much brake. So they created certifications for the gliders very specifically to address this problem. So if you fly a certified beginner class glider like the Dominator and a paramotor that has certified height hook in points like the flat top, you could literally bury the brakes and that glider is not going to instantly whip stall out of the sky. So this problem was fixed, basically addressed over 40 years ago. This problem has been basically solved, but you have people today selling units that literally haven't been updated for even basic safety advances in over 40 years. So not even a certified glider flown with these paramotors will 
have that safety. It's a major, major issue. But it's actually worse than that in this video because this guy looks like he's flying one of the Mac Para chargers, which is a totally uncertified class. Well, an uncertified class glider has a much shorter brake range. With a certified class glider, you can pull quite a bit of brakes and they're designed to be stall and spin resistant. But an uncertified class glider is expecting you to be an expert pilot and so you should know better than pulling too much brake and literally as little as a foot or even four inches of brake can stall an uncertified class glider. So then you combine that with uncertified hook in points where you can easily pull four feet of brake instead of four inches of brake and that is why people are whip stalling and spinning their gliders right out of the sky. You see it all over YouTube. It has absolutely nothing to do with the actual sport where people get actual training and real actual gear. It is complete total incompetence. So there's another major issue in the sport. Very commonly you get newbies who get into the sport and then they get into the sky a couple of times and they think because after 10 tries they can get in the sky that they can then teach you how they got in the sky. So like one video, for example, there's a newbie named Tucker Gott and you can watch him teaching his girlfriend how to fly where all he does is hook her up and tries to chuck her in the sky over and over and over and she pounds in left and right, constantly losing control of the glider, never even learned any ability to actually control the glider. This is a major issue. Training is not about showing someone a few pieces that might get them in the air after a whole bunch of tries. Training is about teaching them the actual skills to master control the glider and preparing them in every single way for every possible scenario of what can and will go wrong. Things like stalling and spinning your glider. That's why at super training, students are doing upwards of 60 hours or more of glider control. 60, six, zero, hours of glider control where on the ground you will literally stall your glider over and over and over and over until you get that feel and get to a place where you know exactly how much brake you can pull and how much is too much. Pretty much everyone else in the industry is chucking people in the air with as little as zero to three hours of practice so these people have absolutely no concept, no feel, no reflexes, and no real ability to control your glider. Just like when Tucker Gott pretended to teach his girlfriend, it's obvious she has zero control of the glider. He's just telling her to run and hit the throttle. Run, hit throttle! It's like some Kurt Vister video where he says he'll train you for free, but his free training is go, 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 throttle, throttle, go, go. There's your free training. Would you like to hear it again? That's not training. Training is building in those reflexes and teaching someone mastery of control of that actual glider. Another huge part of competent instruction is preparing students with the proper gear to stack all the safety and odds in their favor. You don't take some newbie in the sport who trusts their life to your training and then put them on some total death trap like a Scout Paramotor or a Fly Products or a Nirvana or a Fresh Breeze when they literally haven't had a safety update in over 40 years. A competent instructor doesn't do that because the flat top paramotor is literally the only paramotor on the market that has been designed to address all of the well-known safety issues in the sport. It's literally the only paramotor that competent pilots and instructors will fly or recommend. So the gear you use is absolutely critical. And one of the things that we're seeing from this very crash is the difference between certified height hook in points, which he did not have, and uncertified hook in points. You can see his hook in points were clear up above his head. But worse than that, or on top of that, in conjunction with that, when he pounds into the ground, you can see it's his butt that hits first. And 98% of the 
time in the sport, you're going to hit butt first in some sort of butt down attitude. That is why the flat top has up to 18 inches of crumple zone under your butt. So that even if you totally jack it up and in the very rare slight chance or event, you do try and install a certified glider with certified height hook endpoints, even a full stall only descends at about 20 feet per second. So with 18 inches of crumple zone, the odds are you wouldn't even be injured, let alone seriously injured or killed. So there are huge gear issues, like the guy who just died on a Blackhawk from this exact same scenario. Uncertified height hook endpoints, uncertified glider. Guy goes out to fly, gets in a pressure situation and pulls too much brake, whip stalls the glider right out of the sky, bam, zero crumple zone, broke his back and died right there on the field. I actually made a video of it and to help people understand, I went out and I did the exact same thing that he had done, but on a flat top with a Dominator. Certified glider, certified height hook in points, and in that video, I bury the brakes over and over and show you that that glider is not gonna just whip stall out of the sky because you pulled a little too much brake. It's the design of the gear. So very specifically because of that gear, Blackhawk gear in that instance, he died. When had he just had proper gear, which is the flat top and a good name brand certified glider, there is no way or the odds are extremely remote that that would have ever happened in the first place, let alone even if he did take three wraps, bury him and hold him over eight seconds to try and get it to stall, which is extremely difficult with certified height hook in points, even then that full stall would have likely resulted in no injury, let alone a death. So the gear that you fly is absolutely critical and the competency and experience of who you're getting advice from is absolutely life and death critical. There are people all over YouTube making videos and giving advice and, oh, this is how you get into the sport. Look at their skill level because many of these people don't have even the most basic skill or understanding of a glider. For example, like Tucker Gott, since he has a lot of views, the, he's one that's fairly well known in the industry. Look for any video of him just doing what you can see all sorts of brand new super students doing. Where's any video of him reverse kiting with no hands? Just reverse kiting with no hands. It doesn't exist because he doesn't have that skill. Where's a video of him walking up a vertical wall, perfectly controlling the loading of the glider? He doesn't have that skill and that's why he doesn't have the ability to prevent collapses and that's why he's scared to death of any turbulence. Well, there's no such thing as perfectly smooth air. So flying at all with no ability to control the glider is rolling the dice with your life, especially when you're flying the absolute worst and most deadly gear in the history of the sport. In fact, the gear Tucker got is promoting is, do you realize he's the replacement the guy that Tucker replaced died on that exact same gear for these exact same reasons. Totally uncertified glider and a paramotor that's never had a safety update in over 40 years in the sport, which is the Scout. Literally, it's just kind of a fake copy of the old Sky Cruiser design without a single update to address any of the issues. So when you see these incidents all over YouTube and see people just pound out of the sky and you don't really understand the reason, you have to listen to actual experts. Look at the skill and experience level of who is explaining what's going on because the actual truth, like certified height hook in points, once you hear about it, you don't even have to be a pilot to understand it makes perfect sense of being able to pull 14 inches of brakes versus pulling four feet of brake. It's just obvious and logical from experience and knowledge and history in the sport. So when you're getting into the sport, you know, it's people see these videos and it freaks them out and makes them think the sport is crazy unsafe when it's not. It's actually incredibly safe and I'm the perfect poster child of how safe it is because I'm the guy out there pushing all the limits and setting the world records and doing things 
nobody else on earth can do. So if anyone was going to get injured, it would be me, the guy pushing all the limits. But in reality, I've never even been injured. Not a single injury in over 20 years of flying and way, way over 11,000 flights of experience. So the sport is remarkably safe. In fact, in all of history, only one single person has ever died on a flat top paramotor. So people with proper gear and training, in all of history, one death. But people on the horrible outdated gear, I counted 19 in a single year. 19 in one year versus one in all of history. That's how big of a difference that gear makes. Now, certified glider versus uncertified glider. It's horrifying to see people selling wings like the Ozone Spider or the Mac Para Charger or the Dudek Nucleon or you know the Ozone Viper. Any glider that they call Reflex cannot pass any level of safety certifications. I have other videos explaining that they're not Reflex. It's a total scam, but they're not certified. Normal certifications, you've got A, B, C, and D class. Uh, the Dominator is beginner class, like an A class. Then you've got a B class, then a C class, which is less safe, and then a D class, which is the least safe in the industry. But then you have totally uncertified, and that is the gear that people like Tucker got are flying and promoting that his predecessor already died on, but he continues promoting that gear. That is what's getting people seriously injured and killed over and over and over in exactly the same ways over and over. Over a hundred people shredded in props. If you don't want to look like this, you need to get a paramotor like the flat top that's designed to keep you out of the prop. So when you see someone stall or spin their glider out of the sky, there's specific reasons. One, they probably weren't trained properly, but even with the best training in the world, even with super training, where you completely master control the glider, people still will get in a pressure situation and they'll tend to pull too much brakes. That's why on top of proper training, you also need proper gear that's designed to address all of those basic issues. So the gear and the training. Plus you need the right size and right class of glider. If you sell some total newbie beginner, an uncertified class glider that has a brake range of about this big where the glider stalls after you pull that much brake, you're just asking to get this person killed. Plus, when you stall and spin those gliders, they just don't recover like beginner certified class gliders. You can see all of the collapse testing I've done on the Dominator over and over and over, even at low altitudes, because the Dominator is so ridiculously safe, you yank a full collapse, it just pops right back out. You stall it and it immediately wants to recover from that stall all by itself. Uncertified class glider, you see these people take a collapse and it just never recovers like at the Salton Sea recently, while we got a bunch of guys flying Dominators and the weather conditions picked up, well, the Dominators had no problem. Not a, not a single issue with the Dominators, but yet another guy on one of these gliders that they call Reflex stalled right out of the sky, pounded right into the ground. The glider never even tried to restart. As Soon as he took a collapse, it just deflated, spun, and stalled him straight into the ground. So the gear is what's causing 99% of the serious issues and deaths. As long as you get proper gear and proper training and look at the skill level of who you're talking to, this sport can be remarkably safe and incredibly enjoyable. It can literally be the coolest thing you ever do if you just call someone that knows what they're doing like me. I mean, if I was going to get training in the sport, I would want to go to the most experienced. When I learned, I trained with the U.S. National Paragliding Champion and many of the top acro pilots in the world at that time. So seek out the people that know what they're doing or just simply call me and talk to me and get the facts because the facts simply make sense. Thanks for listening.